From CBS News headquarters in Washington, this is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Good evening. President Reagan today named a woman to the Supreme Court, and another barrier fell. The first Catholic justice was chosen in 1835, the first Jew in 1916, the first and only black in 1967. If confirmed, Arizona Judge Sandra O'Connor will join a court that has been dominated by white Protestant males for its 191 years of existence. At the White House, Bill Plant has more on the president's choice. Noting that he had promised to appoint the most qualified woman I can possibly find to the Supreme Court, Mr. Reagan this morning announced he had found such a woman. I will send to the Senate the nomination of Judge Sandra Day O'Connor of Arizona Court of Appeals for confirmation as an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. She is truly a person for all seasons, possessing those unique qualities of temperament, fairness, intellectual capacity, and devotion to the public good, which have characterized the 101 brethren who have preceded her. Since her name surfaced last week, the White House has received thousands of letters and telegrams opposing Judge O'Connor's nomination from Right to Life groups. But the president, though he didn't want to take questions, paused long enough to support her on that score. I am completely satisfied. Attorney General William French Smith reiterated that the administration feels Mrs. O'Connor's record on Right to Life issues as a state legislator is perfectly satisfactory and only one of many issues considered. Mrs. O'Connor has been considered with respect to her overall qualifications and background, and uh, there has not been any effort to focus in on any one issue and judge her on that basis. As far as the administration is concerned, there was only one overriding qualification required. We're satisfied that, uh, that she looks upon the judicial function as uh, being one which is intended to interpret and apply the law and not to make it. The White House takes the position that Judge O'Connor's votes in the Arizona legislature are being misrepresented by those who oppose her. She has told the president that she is personally opposed to abortion. In one unusual bit of lobbying on Judge O'Connor's behalf, Supreme Court Justice William Rehnquist called Mr. Reagan to urge her selection, according to sources. O'Connor and Rehnquist were classmates at Stanford Law School. He first in the class, she third. Whether that had anything to do with the president's decision is unclear. In any case, aides say, Mr. Reagan has been determined from the outset to name a woman, if at all possible. His political advisors urged him on. Judge O'Connor was the only candidate the president personally interviewed. And once that had taken place, the only person seriously considered. Bill Plant, CBS News, the White House. Judge O'Connor's record in the year and a half on the Arizona Appeals Court gives no clear signal of how she might affect the Supreme Court. Indeed, most of the initial opposition to her selection is based on her legislative, not her judicial record. More on this from Fred Graham. The addition of Sandra O'Connor to the Supreme Court will probably not change its decisions very much, since she appears to be a judicial moderate, much in the mold of the man she is replacing, Justice Potter Stewart. As a state appeals judge, she was not an innovator who tried to make new law, but most of her decisions involved Arizona law and gave no hint of her possible style on the nation's highest court. But as a member of the Arizona Senate, she seemed sympathetic to women's rights to abortions. She voted for a bill to legalize abortion on demand in 1970, three years before the U.S. Supreme Court legalized abortions, and she voted against a resolution calling for a constitutional amendment to overturn the Supreme Court's decision. She also voted against banning abortions at a state-owned hospital. The major immediate opposition to her nomination came from opponents of abortion. The whole reason the right to life movement exists is because abortion was legalized by the U.S. Supreme Court. This is an appointee to that very court. This is the most important appointment that President Reagan could make. We feel that it is one that we simply cannot tolerate. Support of abortion and support of equal rights amendment is enough to disqualify her from most any conservatives. The president of the National Organization for Women says it's important that the Supreme Court will finally have the benefit of a woman's perspective. You've opened a door. You've opened a door with a woman who is sensitive, it appears, to women's rights, which is very important. If it had been a person opposed to women's rights, it would make a mockery, really, of advancement. How will a woman justice be accepted by that clubby bastion that used to be called the 9-0 men? We ask a woman who once clerked for one of the justices. 
I don't think there'll be anybody who will be particularly bothered uh, by her coming there. I think there will be justices who, who uh, will have to adjust in some way. Um, or justices, like I can think of Justice Powell, who is a, you know, a very uh, gentlemanly and polite man, and I'm sure he will uh, may treat Justice O'Connor uh, somewhat differently than a male colleague, uh, perhaps more deferential in some ways. The only official reaction from the court came from Justice Byron White, who said, we're glad the position is filled, and it looks like a good choice. Fred Graham, CBS News, Washington. The Reverend Jerry Falwell's self-described moral majority opposed President Reagan's choice, calling it a mistake and saying the church people would desert him in droves. Some Reagan supporters in the Senate also thought it a mistake. Phil Jones is at the Capitol. The view among conservative Republicans here is that Ronald Reagan has been misled on this nomination. To prove their point, they are using a copy of this memo which they have obtained, a memo prepared by a counselor to the Attorney General and reportedly used by the President in his final decision. It is a memo that deals with Judge O'Connor's description of her own public record on family-related issues and her claim that she had never been a leader or outspoken advocate on behalf of either anti- or pro-abortion rights organizations. Senator Jesse Helms was called to the White House this morning, and he came away saying that he and the President had conflicting information. The information that he has about the lady and the information that I have about the lady uh, are not consistent one to the other. He told me that she had not, to his knowledge, uh, participated in the ERA uh, issue, that she was strongly opposed personally to abortion. Skepticism was also expressed by another one of the president's longtime supporters. We have been having a Supreme Court that has been very activist, uh, usurping uh, authority basically left to the Congress of the United States, so I'm concerned whether or not this nominee uh, is a person who's going to be an interpreter of the law or whether it's going to be a person who wants to make the law. According to some fellow conservatives, Judiciary Committee Chairman Strom Thurmond was not pleased with the selection, but Thurmond refused to appear before cameras today. Judiciary Committee member Edward Kennedy was pleased that a woman had been nominated and others predicted easy going. I'd be very surprised if the nomination ran into serious difficulty. I think she will make an excellent judge. I don't think the administration, quite frankly, could have done any better. I just don't think that there are enough horses uh, to deny her this confirmation in any way. No date has been set for confirmation hearings. The administration is pressuring for early hearings before the senators go out for the August recess. The concern being that the longer it takes here, the better chance there will be for opposition to build. Phil Jones, CBS News, Capitol Hill. At 51, Ms. O'Connor will be the youngest member of the Supreme Court. With her husband and three sons, she appeared at a news conference today to acknowledge her nomination. Gary Shepard reports from Phoenix. Judge O'Connor says President Reagan called her yesterday afternoon with the news she was receiving the Supreme Court nomination. And today, she told reporters here she is happy and honored to have been selected. This is a momentous day in my life and the life of my family. If I am confirmed in the United States Senate, I will do my best to serve the court and this nation in a manner that will bring credit to the president, to my family, and to all the people of this great nation. The 51-year-old justice, who sits on Arizona's second highest court, declined to answer substantive questions pending her Senate confirmation hearings, but she did talk about how she intends to deal with her new assignment. I uh, can only say that I will approach it with care and effort and uh, do the best job that I possibly can do. Sandra O'Connor graduated from Stanford University Law School in California in 1952, finishing third in her class, two notches below William Rehnquist, who already sits on the Supreme Court. She got a job as a county attorney in California, then as an assistant attorney general in Arizona. 
She entered politics here, appointed to fill a vacancy in the state senate in 1969, and eventually becoming majority leader, the first and only woman to do that. Then she moved to the bench, first as a superior court judge, and 18 months ago, she was named to sit on Arizona's Court of Appeals. She gets high marks from fellow jurists, one of whom described her today as having a razor-sharp mind combined with steady temperament. It was back at Stanford that Judge O'Connor met her husband John, now a Phoenix attorney, when they worked together on a law review article and later married. It was also back then she had trouble finding a job as a lawyer. At that time, not one of the major law firms in California had ever hired a woman lawyer. And I finally got one job offer from a major law firm in Southern California, and it was as a legal secretary. Today, Supreme Court nominee Sandra O'Connor, when asked whether it's an extra burden being the first woman appointed to the nation's highest court, replied, I hope not. Gary Shepard, CBS News, Phoenix.